Hey lads, you with Budget Monk. Welcome to a new YouTube video. So, as you can see, we've got a really uh, nice Italy here. This is on very hard difficulty. I just PU'd Russia. We're Coptic. I'm actually Austrian culture, and I'm trying to convert the entire world to our culture as well as numerous other things, one tag, etc. Now, when I achieve these runs and I post the result, a lot of people, of course, they think that um, this is uh, unrelatable, this kind of game. And what I wanted to do is just shoot a quick pragmatic video trying to dispel some of that so i might have other videos that come to mind or uh, topics of conversation which come to mind um, to help dispel this like it's not that hard to do this it is hard but you can also do well yourself um, and i want to show you things that some people might not be aware of so today we're going to be talking about the improve relations modifier uh, the diplomat is kind of the gold standard of advisors and for most of the game, certainly the early game and the mid game, if you're going for a world domination or world conquest style playthrough, anything that resembles a, a big grand campaign like that, this is the gold standard because it improves your relations over time. So basically this trumps all other diplomats except for, you know, rare circumstances. Like some circumstances, money may be more valuable, but in general, this is the best. Uh, so how does improved relations work? Basically, if you look at a nation, if their aggressive expansion is not capped out at 1,000, <laughs> um, it improves over time. And that is actually uh, increased based on your improved relations modifier. So you can look at your country modifiers here, and uh, it's either Diplo improved relations or it's under I or improved relations. There we go. So in my case, we have 100% more improved relations, basically. Each uh, modifier of insult, whether it's a force break alliance, anything like that, they all have a unique, completely individual amount at the rate at which they change per year. And aggressive expansion is two per year. In our case, we've just about doubled that to be a yearly change of four because of our 100% increased improved relations. Uh, what that means is in the early game, let's say you're playing a nation like uh, Florence. Italy is really, really powerful for world conquest type of runs. And Florence is one of the better nations to form Italy. Very affluent nation with two trade centers. They can pretty much afford advisors right from the onset of the game, right? Especially if, let's say, your first move is you take Luca. Well, you want to try to expand as, as quickly as possible so that your aggressive expansion is actually reducing over time. So that next time you want to expand, it's less likely that you are obviously going to be coalitioned. But what's important is in the early game, if you are limited by coalition and you're limited by aggressive expansion, as opposed to, you know, being unable to win wars or not having the monarch points to core, that kind of thing. If this is your limitation, well, that limitation is going to be reduced by 20%. And... Uh, that is why also uh, diplomatic ideas, one of the reasons diplomatic ideas are so crucial is because of the improved relations modifier. So that will obviously stack it up to 45%, as well as the reputation, war score, etc. But not only that, diplomatic allows you to look at the individual nations who may or may not join a coalition and to improve with them selectively because of the additional diplomats so you may have a coalition of five nations but you've actually improved two of those nations out putting it down to three and um when i say improved out i mean maxing relations by 100 and even though you have negative 50 relations uh and they would be outraged if they were negative they are not in the negative they like you you know with 50 plus aggressive expansion so not only does a just in general this allow you to expand more quickly but it allows you to basically stay alive by improving relations who hate you uh, with nations who hate you um, but not only that of course there is the other fundamental one is the established communities whenever you have a merchant in a trade node you can establish communities so what that means you can see that this is affecting denmark it's a bit useless for me now this has been left for the entire game uh, Vienna is a really, really nice hotspot because pretty much all of the Germans and more are trading in Vienna. And you'll see, if you look in the beginning of the game, this affects these countries, 
Denmark. It affects just bloody everybody. Really, really good place to be. And what that means is that you actually have more improved relations because it's not added to the modifier here, right? So in our case, we have actually over 110% improved relations with Denmark. Well, if you were an Italian, let's say collecting in the Venetian region, you should be here, change this to established communities, and you'll have further improved relations with people all over Europe. Another hotspot is uh, Champagne, if you were in the Genoan region. So the game may have you in Valencia, transferring to Genoa, but you should probably be in Champagne. Now, it's not as good as Vienne, but it also has a good coverage. So established communities is really important. And uh, lastly, if you were Florence, for example, you would form Italy, which has the largest that I know of, I believe the largest modifier in the game, in their traditions, 50% improved relations, massive. It's actually larger than the Austrian improved relations, which, by the way, is a formable nation. And actually, they do not require a tech. They're not barred behind tech 10 to form Austria. So the thing about Austria, of course, um, my timeline's bugged out. Oh, this is a brigands run, guys. Uh, is you have to kill Austria. You have to kill Austria in order to be able to form them. But uh, Austria is also a really nice formable nation because of the improved relations. So I just wanted to throw it out there. That's pretty basic stuff for people. But just if you are not aware, this should be your main staple. Um, diplomatic is S tier. The only other Diplo idea group that really compares to it at all is influence, in my opinion. Uh, it's a good first choice for an idea group because in the beginning of the game, your admin is the most valuable point. And I would say that um, mill, mill is more circumstantial, but if you're playing an OPM like Brigands, you need you know t all, the, all the edges that you can get, including not falling behind in military technology, right? So yeah, basically take Diplo ideas. I hope that that benefits people. I hope that people learn something. And I thought I'd just shoot a quick video as opposed to no content at all. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in another video.